Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are around the world. Welcome to the classroom. We're going to be talking about capacitive reactants today. But before we start, um, I guess I need to talk to you guys, right? Before we start, I um, need to take rolls. So if you guys will uh, say if you're here, we'll go on. I see about... Ruben, where's your name? Yes. Hey, Ruben's here. Hello. Um, I see Pedro a couple Lopez. of you guys out there. Yes. Good afternoon. Hello, Pedro. Christian Rodriguez. Hello, Christian. Yes. Hello. So, all right, hold on. Let me let me see. I got I got Christian Rodriguez. Ruben is here. Pedro Lopez is here. Oh. Enter him. Yes. Hello. Caleb Lujan says, here. <laughs> I haven't called your name. Caleb, see, I just missed somebody. Edgar, Edgar, Edgar M. Let's see, Edgar M. Okay, I gotcha. Um, so if I don't call your name, or if I call your name, uh, you don't have to answer. If I don't call your name, then answer. I got... Pedro says, hello. Okay, I got Pedro, Caleb, Edgar, Herve, Ruben, and Christian. Did I miss anybody? Who did I miss? <clears throat> I got Pedro, Caleb, Edgar, Hervé, Ruben, Christian. And I actually see eight out there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Who might those other two be? And if, and if you're... Bell. Says. Ah, here. there we go. Got Mr. Bell. Mr. Bell's there. <clears throat> All right, so we're missing Felix, Kevin, Noah, the other Christian, Brian, and Rolando. Oh, and Daniel. We're missing these guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven are gone. Maybe they're just running behind. Oh. Yeah, and, and TK's 3D prints, ball means. Ball means lurk away. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I'll put you down in attendance also, but uh, but welcome, TK. Um, I am Al Forte, uh, a.k.a. Kilroy, and uh, I'm teaching a, a electronics class tonight, and my students are in the... Uh, um, in the chat, but Felix everybody is here. welcome also. Yes. I'm here. There's Felix. There's Felix. And uh, Gomez. There's Noah. Yes. Good deal. Here. Good deal. There's Noah. All right. So we're still missing Kevin, Christian, Brian, and Daniel. Well, I think that's a majority. I'm sure that everybody will show up. This is probably going to be a short lecture. Um, I'm going to go through this PowerPoint and talk about capacitive reactants. If you, if you look at the other um, videos, the other lectures, they're different topics. And um, let's, let's get started. We're going to cover alternating current in a capacitive circuit. We're going to talk about the amount of, of X sub C and, and what it's equal to. We're going to talk about series or parallel capacitive reactants. Now, all these are probably new terms, right, guys? Um, but there'll be some old ones that, that, that you've uh, seen in some of the other uh, lectures. Um, Ohm's Law. Hey, Ohm's Law, you know Ohm's Law and how it applies to uh, X sub C um, or, or uh, capacitive reactants. Um, uh, applications of capacitive reactants. And then sine wave charge and discharge current. So, but that's it. Those are, those are the actual topics. Like I said, this is going to be a short one, um, but uh, 
but there's definitely plenty of time to ask any questions you guys might have. Um, let's get started. So that right there, X sub C is the formula for capacitive reactants. And it's 1 over, or the inverse of, 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitor value. And to explain it, capacitor's reaction is the opposition of a capacitor's flow of, uh, uh, of the flow of sinus sinusoidal current. In other words, the current from, a, from AC. Um, so it's the Christian opposition. Says, Hi, sorry, I'm a little late. All right, that's okay. You're here. Better, better late than never, Christian. We got you down. Um, awesomeness. Be sure to ask questions if you have them. So capacitive reactance is the opposition a capacitor offers to the flow of current is what it is. Uh, AC current. Um, the symbol is X sub C. Uh, the units are in ohms. So when we, when we calculate this, it'll be ohms, um, but for an AC circuit. Uh, formula, this applies only to the sine wave circuits, and that's the formula that we just went over a second ago. So current flows with an AC voltage applied to a series connected capacitor in the light bulb. And we'll see, we'll see what, what I'm talking about here in a second. So current flows with AC voltage applied to a series connected capacitor in light bulb. So the, think of it this way, and I'll show you the pictures here. Probably should have rearranged this a little bit. But you've got a light bulb and you've got a capacitor in circuit, in series. And that's, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you and I'll come back. See, kind of something like that. We'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. So let me go back. Uh, there's no current that flows through the capacitor's dielectric. Remember, if you remember from capacitance or capacitor's last video, there's two plates and there's a dielectric in the center of it. There's no current flow through there. Just keep that in mind. While the capacitor is being charged by increasing the applied voltage to the side, the charging current flows in one direction in the conductors to the plates. So basically, it only flows in one direction in relationship to that. And we'll, we'll see a little picture of it here in a second. While the capacitor is discharging, in other words, when, when it's losing its charge, um, the applied voltage decreases also and the discharge current flows in the reverse direction. So current flows in one direction and then in the other uh, as it discharges. And with alternating voltage applied, a capacitor alternately charges and discharges. So if you have a sine wave or, or AC and it's you know, doing this, right? It's, it's going positive to, uh, positive to zero, to negative, to, to zero again, to positive, et cetera. The, the, uh, the, the charge actually charges, or the capacitor actually charges, and the capacitor dis uh, with, with that rhythm. Um, the first, the first uh, little schematic image here is a sine wave, and um, because that's our, that's our source, no, no longer is it you know, a battery symbol like we, we've been used to, right? So the polarity changes back and forth, right? We've got a capacitor in series with a light bulb. And the current goes back and forth like this, back and forth. Uh, the, the bulb will shine brightly. It, it, it won't know the difference, really. I mean, it could because it, it's on all the time, in a sense. The smaller the capacitor has, the more opposition to AC and the bulb is dimmer. So if you put a smaller capacitor in there, there's, there's less movement back and forth and the, 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 the light is, is, is dimmer. If the capacitor blocks DC, the bulb cannot light. So in other words, if you, put, if you have a DC voltage here of, of 120 volts, there's going to be 120 volts right there. But there won't be any light at all because there's no current flow at all. So, so the capacitor blocks the DC and, and the bulb cannot light. What does that look like right there, guys? What, what, is that, what does that look like if, if, you, if you can measure voltage at both of these points? What state is that capacitor in? Or, or if that was just a piece of wire, what state would that be in? Or if it was a switch, what state would that be? Huh? 
Take a guess. If we can read with, with a voltmeter, 120 volts right here, what's the figurative state between these two points right here? And, and I understand there's a little bit of lag between the time I ask the question and the time you think about the answer and the time that you put the answer in. Come on, somebody say something. Somebody put something in there. Did, did you all leave on me? <laughs> I still haven't seen Kevin, haven't seen Brian, or Rolando, or Daniel. If you're out there, please, please holler. So the answer to this is, if I can read 120 volts right there, that capacitor acts as if it were a, an open. And if you think about it, if there's no current flow, right? If, if there's no current flow through here, that's why the bulb's not lighting. So there's no current flow. So this has to act as an open, which is basically an open to the opposition of, of DC. Says, switch is closed. But if a switch, but if it was a switch that was closed, then you couldn't read 120 volts there. Because it would be like a piece of wire. And you can't you can't measure voltage on a piece of wire. But when you open up that switch, now you have a potential difference between both of these two points. Whereas just a wire, there's no potential difference in in a in a, in a closed switch. Yes, yes, there you go. You, you corrected it. There you go. Yes. Open. Correct. An open switch. Exactly. It acts as an open switch. But that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if it's an open switch, then there's no current flow. You have to have a complete circuit to, to have current flow through this through the circuit. But that's what that's what a capacitor does, or that's how a capacitor acts in respect to DC voltage. Very good. So in summary, and, and no, we're not to the end. This Brian isn't it, it's not that yes. So, Hello. Brian, Brian, hey, got you down, Brian. You are present and accounted for. So, you'll just have to catch up with that first little part once the, once the, the lecture is over. So, in summary, alternating current flows in a capacitive circuit with an AC voltage applied. Dig this. Alternating current flows. So, the current goes back and forth like this. It flows back and forth. Okay, it doesn't go through the capacitor, but it goes back and forth, which is a little different considering that in a DC circuit, the current flows from positive to negative, right? But in AC circuit, it flows back and forth, back and forth. Okay, well, that current flow, if it's a capacitor, right, and, and, and you have AC, lights a bulb. But if you put a DC voltage there, and we'll, I'm probably getting ahead of the, uh, or, you know, ahead of the summary, if you put a DC voltage there, the capacitor blocks the current flow, so there's no current flow, so there's no, because it doesn't go back and forth, it just goes one way. So a smaller capacitance allows less current, which means more X sub C with more ohms opposition. So think of it this way. We're saying that capacitive, um, uh, I mean, that the resistance they're used by X sub C, or the, the, the ohms, is, is higher the smaller the capacitor. So smaller capacitance allows less current, which means more X sub C with more ohms oppositions. So if you put a smaller capacitor in there, then there's, it's like a bigger resistor that you're putting there. So the current is flowing less. And I know it's a new concept. Um, lower frequencies for the applied voltage reply, or result in, in less current and more X sub C or more impedance or more uh, capacitive reactance. Think of it this way. <clears throat> the faster you go back and forth, the more current there is, right? So if the frequency of that, of that, of that sine wave oscillation, if the frequency of that sine wave oscillation is slower, well, there's going to be less current flow. 
but the faster that frequency is, the more the more current flow. So that, that kind of makes sense if you think of it that way, because it's moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you know, even faster, right? So with a steady DC voltage source, zero frequency, and this is a good way to think about it, the capacitor's opposition is infinite and there is no current that flows. Uh, in, in the case of capacitors, effectively an open circuit, like we said. Um, so because DC voltage just goes, and it's there, right? It doesn't go back down to zero. It doesn't change. There's no frequency. It has zero frequency. That's why um, there's no current. Any questions so far? And I'm going to keep going, but if you do have a question, by all means, pop in. And we can we can back up or go back or whatever. So summary continued. Um, X sub C depends on the frequency of the applied voltage and the amount of capacitance. So that's that's a that's a given. The amount of frequency and the applied voltage. Um, all right, let's see what Ruben's going to say. Ruben Regine says, It's like a highway. The bigger the highway capacitor, the more traffic current can travel. The smaller, the less can travel. Sure, sure. And then think of the speed of the highway, okay? Think of the speed of the highway. The faster the frequency, the faster you go, the more cars are going to go by. So you can go by faster, right? So... Yeah, the, 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 that's, that's a good analogy. So it's like a highway. The bigger the highway, if you have a bigger capacitor, right? Definitely. You have, more, you have more room to move around, right? You have more room, you know, to get, you know, six, seven, eight lanes of traffic through there. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, the bigger the highway, the bigger the capacitor, the more traffic, the more current. And, um, and the faster you go, the higher the frequency, the, the more the more current flows also. So you gotta you gotta add that frequency in there too. Exactly. Exactly. It's a good good analogy. Very good. So X sub C is less for more capacitance. Okay. And X sub C is less for higher. Oh, I'm sorry, X sub C is less for more capacitance, which which is what you said. X sub C is less for higher frequencies. Um, so yeah, yeah. There, there's the, there's the two. There's the frequency. Oops. There's the frequency. There's capacitor. Okay. And uh, and of course you have more voltage. That also helps. So factors ex uh, affecting. The value of X sub C is inversely proportional to the value of the capacitance. Inversely proportional. Because if you notice it, it's got the 1 over 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance. Um, increasing capacitance decreases that, that resistance, right? That X sub C, um, that impedance. Uh, it, it, it reduces, it reduces that so if you get a bigger capacitor then it's like Ruben said you've got a bigger highway to travel on okay more lanes more traffic can go through um, then decreasing the capacitance increases that resistance so if you make the road smaller then you have then you have a, 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 a decrease or an increase in, in that in that resistance or in that opposition to the current flow. The value of X sub C is inversely proportional to the frequency. So again back back to the the, the formula. It, it's it's the same it's the same thing. So increasing the frequency decreases X sub C and decreasing the frequency increases X sub C or that resistance. So these are these are a couple of formulas that um, that you might want to think about. And maybe write down. You might even see them on a test. And you know the next test is what? The next test is uh, well, there's going to be a little test on 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 this that I'm going to put out 
uh, after the the uh, you know the 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 video comes out or or the lecture finishes, obviously. But guess what? You'll probably see these these uh, formulas, or at least me asking, what is X sub C? What is the capacitor? What is the frequency? Fortunately, here's the formulas. So when you know that frequency and capacitance, then, then you can figure out what X sub C is. I mean, it's simple. Just plug the numbers in. When you know the X sub C and the, and the frequency, then you can figure out what capacitor you need. So if you know the frequency you're, you're using and you know what resistive qualities you want, um, then all you got to do is plug it in. If you know the X sub C and the capacitor, then figuring out the frequency would be just, again, plugging it in. F is equal to 2 pi divided by, or I'm sorry, uh, F is equal to the inverse of 2 pi times capacitor times the X sub C. And, and thusly, like the other formulas also state. So that's not too hard, right? So series or parallel capacitive reactances. Capacitive reactance is in opposition to ohms. So series or parallel reactances are, are combined in the same way as resistances. Hey, do you remember the, the way that resistances acted in, in a series? What about in parallel? So it's saying that so series or parallel reactances are combined in the same way as resistances. What does that mean? Uh, combining capacitive reactances is opposite to the way capacitance are combined. What? What does that say? Combining capacitive reactances is opposite to the way capacitance are combined. What that's saying is the reactance is different than the way that you combine capacitors. Back in, in one of the other lectures, um, we talked about the capacitors and how capacitors actually, uh, the, the, the farads actually added up. So it's, it's the opposite. <clears throat> the two procedures are, are compatible because the inverse relationship. See, so just because the capacitors calculated a different way, it's the inverse. So, so that's why it works. So that's that relationship between the capacitor and the, the capacitive reactants. We'll, we'll go into this. So V sub capacitor 1 is equal to current times the X sub C 1. So what does that mean? So series capacitive reactants. So if, so if we have capacitive reactants in series, what would you guys guess would be the, the, uh, the, um, the way to calculate it? I'll go on and, and say it. Um, the total reactances is the sum of the individual reactances. So this, doesn't that sound like resistors in series? Well, it's the same thing for capacitive reactants. If you have capacitive reactants and you have it in a series, this amount of capacitive reactants, this amount, and this amount, then it's the sum of those, of those reactances, which is the total capacitive reactants is equal to the capacitive reactance of capacitor 1, the capacitive reactance of capacitor 2, capacitive reactance of capacitor 3, plus dot, dot, dot. In other words, whatever that series um, capacitive reactance is, it gets added up. Questions? Comments? Um... Let's go on. So all reactances basically have the same current in them, right? Because it's like resistors in a circuit. They all have the same current. So the same thing applies to the reactances. Um, the voltage across these reactants equals uh, the voltage across these reactants equals the current times the resistance. Gee, what does that sound like? Does that sound like Ohm's law? Current times Resistance, right? So current times the reactants, because we said that reactance is the same as is, is ohms, right? Gives you voltage. And voltage is current times resistance, right? So the voltage is equal to the current times the, uh, the, the reactants. 
So that right there is, is what we just said, or wait, is it? One over the capacitive reactance is equal to one over the capacitive reactance one plus one over the capacitance reactance two plus one over capacitance reactance three, right? So that's parallel. Haven't you seen this before? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I know you have. Um, the total reactance is found by the reciprocal formula. And that's, that's how we get that. That's for, that's for parallel. All reactances have the same voltage. The current through each reactance is equal to the voltage. The, the, the current through each reactance equals the voltage of either reactance. And that's the same way that, that parallel resistance was, right? All the, all, the, all the resistors or resistances, all of them, had the same voltage drop, right? And we're talking in parallel. And then the current, depending on, on the different reactances or the resistances, the current was different in them, just depending on the, on the reactants or the resistances of them. So that's, that's parallel. And that's... Rolando L. Yes. Says, hello and evening. Ah! Rolando, I have you... I have you accounted for. I'm still, I'm still waiting on Daniel and on Kevin. If Daniel or Kevin are out there, please holler so I can put you on the, on the good list and take you off the naughty list. So, the current through each resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the reactance, which, which, is, which is the same thing in Ohm's law when you wanted to find the current through a parallel resistor, you took the voltage drop, you divided uh, the, the, the resistance, and you got, you got the current through it. So you, the voltage divided by the current is equal to the, I'm sorry, the voltage divided by the, by the resistance is equal to the current. So if we look, so if we look at this right here, the current in an AC circuit with X sub C alone is equal to the applied voltage divided by the ohms of X sub C. So the current is one amp. We've got an X sub C of 100 ohms, okay, or an impedance of 100 ohms on this capacitor. Um, so what's the voltage drop going to be? Well, obviously, the voltage drop is 100 volts, right? So we're going to have 100 volts. I mean, that's... If you look at it, this goes back to there, and that goes back to there, and we got 100 volts there. Now, in, in a series, in, 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 a, in series with two resistors, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. But to find the current, we take the voltage divided by the total capacitive inductance, or impedance, or resistance, whatever you want to call it, and that's one third of an amp. So we've got 300 ohms impedance here. So 100 volts divided by uh, by 300 ohms, bingo, one third of an amp. And that's that's for resistance. Looks, I mean, that's for a, a series, right? Looks like resistance, like a resistance circuit, doesn't it? Max so world really, there's Max it. World. School is on session. School Max is world entertainment. School is in session. Yes, yes. Session. Welcome, welcome, Mac. How are you? Uh, Mac does some some awesome Star Trek um, uh, videos, movies, highlighting other channels. Um, I haven't had a chance myself to to be there in in a while because we're approaching the uh, final, but. Uh, I'll, I'll be checking in, and I do check in afterwards too. So, so we've got, so we've got resistance in a circuit in series that looks like resistance in, in a resistive circuit. We've got over here. We've got parallel uh, capacitive inductance with capacitors in parallel. And if you notice, it looks just like if it were a resistive circuit or a, a resistor. Circuit. If this was a resistor and this is a resistor, same exact thing applies. The uh, 
The voltage source is the same at these points. I mean, you can see it. You can physically see it, right? So the voltage drop is the same here as it would in a, a resistor circuit. The current is the same. You take the impedance or the resistance of the capacitance uh, of the capacitor, and you divide it by by the uh, by the voltage that's dropped across it, and you get the current flow in there. The same here. So here we've got 100 ohms. Well, divided by um, uh, voltage divided by 100 ohms gives you one amp. And over here, you've got 100 ohm of volts. And you divide that by 200 because it's voltage divided by resistance, right? Gives you the current. Well, you've got a current or an, a, a, an amp or half an amp. I'm sorry. So, so here's here's the thing. Just like in a series resistive circuit uh, or resistance circuit, um, you add up the currents through each branch. So you've got an amp and a half total current flowing. So it, it goes half an amp or an amp through here and half an amp through here. So the total current here or here is an amp and a half, just like if it were resistors. So the sum of parallel branches equals the total current. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the, uh, the example. So really, this doesn't, calculation-wise, doesn't differ from from resistors, or from resistors, I should say, um, it uh, it's the same. So you're just dealing with capacitors instead of resistors, and AC instead of uh, DC. What else we got here? Applications of capac capacitive resistors. What applications could they throw at us? The general use of X sub C or capacitive reactants is to block direct current or DC current, but to, but to provide low reactance for alternating current. So notice what that says. So you got a really high impedance or a total open, right, to DC. But you've got a low reactance for alternating current. So it's, it's used to, to, to manipulate the current flow in an AC circuit. Uh, or at least it blocks, or or also blocks DC. So it blocks DC and it passes AC current. Ohms of R remain the same for DC or AC circuits, but the X sub C depends on the frequency. So you know the ohms, the actual value stays the same, but the capacitive reactance depends on the frequency itself. So the required capacitance or capacitor becomes smaller for higher frequencies. Because remember we talked about that we said that as the capacitance goes down um, or, or I'm sorry as the frequency goes up the capacitor gets smaller the, you need a excuse me you need a smaller and smaller and smaller capacitor. Um, Settle the popcorn down, my goodness. Um, here, is, here is different capacitors and, and what you would use them for and what, the, what, you know, what frequencies and what, uh, what, what uh, capacitance values you'd need. And these are the applications. So 27 microfarads, tiny, right? Is usually used for 16 hertz. Um, frequency, which is usually power line or low audio frequency. Uh, 1 point, or 1.6 microfarads. Notice that 27 and 1.6, right? We're going that way, right? 1.6 is definitely less. So the frequency now is, is about 1,000 hertz or, or kilohertz. Again, audio frequency. 0 0.016 microfarads kind of allows you to be in the 10,000 Hertz range, which again is, is audio frequency. Uh, 1600 picofarad, even smaller, even smaller. Kind of gets you in the radio frequency range of, of 1000 kilohertz. And that's, that's AM radio. That's, that's pretty much what, it, what, what that is. 160 picofarads is about the 10 uh, megahertz or 10 million hertz uh, range or high frequency. Hey, that's like like shortwave radio, and I guess it's got there's a table at 171, I guess 
17.5 at all. I don't know what, what that table 17 one is. Maybe, maybe it'll show us a table here next. Uh, 16 picopherids, even tinier. 100 million hertz, or, or very high frequency, or VHF, which is FM. Hey, we listen to FM all the time. So really tiny capacitors is all we need. Let's see. So summary of capacitance versus capacitive reactance. Uh, capacitance, what's capacitance, guys? Let, let's, let's see if you guys remember. If any of you took notes, this is the time to shine. What is capacitance? Tell me a little bit about capacitance. Let's see if you get it. No takers? What if I give you points? What, what if I give you a point on any one of the assignments? Increase. Could, could mean the difference between a, a B and an A. Tell me something about a capacitance. Christian Rodriguez. Okay, Christian. Says, store charge. Capacitance, stores charge. Um, I believe, Christian, that that gets you plus one. Um, the symbol is, is capacitance. A symbol is C. Okay. The unit is is a uh, is is F. Capacitance. What's F? What's F stand for? How about that one? For capacitance, what does F stand? Says. The opposition a capacitor so, offers to the flow of sinusoidal current. Oh, wait. Hurting the echo. Wait. Says. Okay. Store electrical charge. All right, let's see. The opposition a capacitor offers to the flow of sinusoidal. But we're just talking about capacitance. We're, we're yeah, that, that's right. The, the opposition the capacitor offers to the flow of, but, but that's capacitance. Um, let's see. Uh, store electrical charge. Yeah, capacitor stores electrical well, charge. Now, I, I, I says, can dig that one. Change in an electric charge ability to store electric charge. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's 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 go on and see. I, I wish I had I wish I had the actual deal in front of me. Um, the value depends on its construction. See what we're doing here is we're Grant Bell says frequency frequency. Okay. But capacitance, what about frequency? Um, the unit F is actually farad, okay? The symbol is not charge, but the symbol is, is C for capacitance. The value depends on how it's constructed, right? Uh, depending on whether it's a paper, ooh, paper wound, you know, which is what we used to use, whether it's electrolytic, whether it's a mica capacitor, that's, that's the, the value depends on the construction. Um, the current capacitor is, is equal to the capacitance times um, the, the voltage, the time, the change in voltage to time. Um, now, capacitive reactance, let's go to it, okay? Because we were talking about capacitance. We were talking about capacitance. Now, somebody tell me about capacitive reactance, okay? Somebody tell me about capacitive reactance. What can you tell me about capacitive reactants? Aren't I mean? <laughs> making you guys, making you guys uh, come up with stuff, right? Somebody throw something out there. Tell me about capacitive reactants. Tell me one thing. And, and notice that on the left, cap capacitance, the symbol is C. The unit is F, the value depends on the construction, and then we got a formula. No takers? Whoa. Rolando L. 
Success. Opposition to AC. Okay. Opposition to AC. Success. What I put before was capacitive react adds, not capacitance. Ah, did you put capacitive reactants? Success. Opposition to AC. Caleb Lujan. Success. Symbol is XC. Okay. Rolando L. Success. Alternating current. Yeah, and I and I think Rolando yeah. meant opposition Sis. to alternating current. And no. Okay, but all right, let let's go through this. Okay, capacitive reactants, and I'm going to go back and read those and see what you got. Capacitive reactants. The symbol is X sub C. Who said that? The symbol is X sub C. Caleb, you get a plus one. Okay. I mean, a point's a point, right? Um, let's see. Ruben Rikine says, blocks DC but allows a small capacitance. Ruben Rikine says, for AC. Okay, all right. Okay, guys, I'm, gonna, I'm giving the, the answer, so it's not fair to jump in now. But that's okay, we still haven't gone to that one. All right, so the symbol is X sub C. Um, Caleb, I got you down on that one. The unit is ohm. Nobody, nobody uh, said anything about the unit, right? Did you guys put anything for unit? Nope. I don't see anything. All right. The unit is ohm because capacitive reactance is is measured in ohms. The value depends on the capacitor and the frequency. Let's see. Anything like that in there? I don't really see value depends on capacitor or frequency. And if and if if it is, let me know. Um, the formula is X sub C is equal to uh, V divided by I or one over two times pi F sub C. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna take. I want to take and, and give you guys five points. Um, uh, Caleb, send me the assignment, the assignment, not a test, okay? Send me the assignment that you want to raise five points. And also Christian Rodriguez, do that. I'll, I'll give you guys five points. Now, um, Let's go on. I think we're kind of at the end of this, guys. Um, and it won't really matter. Just, just an assignment. So, so the summary of capacitive reactants versus resistance. Uh, capacitive reactants, uh, the symbol is X sub C. Okay. The unit is ohms. The value decreases of resistance, right? Uh, the value decreases the higher the frequency and current leads voltage by 90 degrees okay um, it we, we didn't talk about that and I'm, and I'm just I guess it's bringing it up um, but 90 degrees and and the, and the current actually leads in other words if you were to plot the, the current as, as a wave the current would lead the voltage by 90 degrees. In other words, it would be a little bit, a little bit ahead of it. Um, I think there's, I think there's a, I think there's a picture of it here in a second. Um, resistance, not capacitor rats, but resistance. The symbol is R. The unit is ohm, same as the unit for capacitive reactance. Uh, the value doesn't change with frequency. It stays the same. On a resistor, we never talked about changing the frequency and, and the resistance would change, right? Um, and the current and the voltage are in phase. In other words, the current and the voltage, if you were to draw it out, would be exactly the same. There wouldn't be a lead or a lag. And I think there's pictures. Maybe, maybe I, I needed to get some pictures. But um, Let me see. So... 
So VA, is that right? Yeah, VA is positive and increasing and charging the capacitor. So, so there's an AC voltage here, and it charges when it get, goes this way, it, it keeps charging it. And then as, as this starts going down, it, it, it starts decreasing by discharging. And then it goes the other way. It changes the polarity. And then it goes this way. And then the same thing happens. So it increases in the negative direction, but charges, and charges the C, but, but in, the, in, in reverse polarity. If you notice, the polarity on the capacitor changes. So this way, when it's, when it's going this way, the capacitor's got this polarity. When it goes, and then it goes back down, right? And then when it goes the other way, then the capacitor polarity changes and uh, negatively de decreases and or decreases and discharges also. Um, this right here is calculating the value of the current and um, the greater the voltage change, the greater the amount of capacitive current, uh, of, co of capacitive current. So if the voltage changes a lot, um, and, and I, I believe I believe that's what the delta means, change in voltage, change in time. Uh, the current also changes in a greater amount of capacitive current. And that's how you calculate capacitive current with that. Capacitive current is equal to the capacitor change in voltage over change in time. Where I is, is amperes, Makes sense, right? Current is I. Uh, C is is a capacitor in farads, and then uh, the dV divided by dT is the volts per second, the change in in volts per second. So sine wave charge and discharge current. We said, and yeah, I remember there was a there was a. I'm, I'm sure the pictures are coming up. There's a 90 degree phase angle. Um, current leads. Voltage. I'm surprised it put it back over there. I would have thought it would have put it at the end. Maybe that's that's what what I was thinking. But, um, so current leads the the voltage by 90 degrees, and the difference results from the fact that the current depends on the change in voltage, change in time rate, not the voltage itself. So I mean, kind of wrap that one around your head. Um, so as as the voltage and and, and time or changing the current has to do something, but not the actual voltage itself. Uh, the ratio of, of voltage divided by current specifies the capacitive reactance in ohms. So we can we can figure out then what the, the, the resistance or what the ohms is um, by doing the voltage divided by current just the same as, hey, Ohm's law, right? Ah, uh, here we go. I knew there was a picture somewhere. So that's the picture of what we're talking about. Excuse me. So the change in voltage divided by a change in time for Daniel sinusoidal Sotelo. voltage is a, is a cosine wave. Just got out work Daniel Sotelo present. All right, Daniel Sotelo, I got you covered. I'm still waiting for Kevin. Um, so that's what that means, or that's that's what that's what's going on. So this is voltage here. Here's a sine wave. Here's the change in in in, uh, uh, in voltage over time, and it, it actually leads by 90 degrees, basically, is is what what it was saying. So so that's that's kind of what it looks like. So current is equal to the capacitor the change in voltage over the change in time. And guess what, guys? That's it. That's it. I, th I think that that little chart should have been earlier. But um, but anyway, do, do any of you have any questions at all on this? There will be some calculations. There will be some true and false questions that uh, that will be popping up here pretty soon. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go in there and finish them up. I was getting them ready, and I, I ran out of time. But uh, but there will be that quiz. And there might be other quizzes popping up, too. Uh, I'll certainly send an email out when those are there. Um, next Thursday, 
be sure to be here also. We're going to start on reviewing for the final. Um, we're going to start on Thursday reviewing, and, um, and we'll see. We'll see. I think it'll be a lot more fun than just looking at a, at a, a spreadsheet. I mean, a, a spreadsheet. Duh, at a uh, PowerPoint. Um, and it'll be a lot more interactive, so th there'll be some things going on to where you guys are actually answering some of the questions and, and not just, you know, maybe answering them, but, uh, but that's, that's what I'm going to shoot for. And I'm not going to give any more away of it. But be sure to be here next Thursday at, at 6, and we'll go over that. Any questions at all before I, uh, I, I end the, the, the stream? Ruby Nieto. Yes. Yeah, that's next Thursday or this. That, that's that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Okay. Today is Tuesday. Thursday is the next Thursday. Okay. So day after tomorrow is what I'm talking about. But I'm glad you asked that. Because next week's Thursday, okay, the Thursday Ruby after Nieto. this week. Is yes. is no 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 that's 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 a that's a good point okay that's a very good point the uh, let, let's let's look at it the final is on the tenth okay and Thursday the third is when we're going to start the review okay we're going to review Thursday the third and Tuesday the eighth and then the final will be on on the tenth okay. But, but that's a really good, that's a really good uh, question. Uh, one that I've actually engaged with, with the English department on, and honestly, they've, they've said you're right. Because if you think of it this way, next Thursday, when's the next Thursday? The next, the next Thursday that we come to is, is, is the day after tomorrow. A week from next Thursday is the following week. And, and that's, that's a, that's an, not an issue, but that's that's English. That's that's English. But I'm very glad that you asked that question. So the third, which is which is Thursday, um, and you know it's weird because this Thursday and next Thursday, this Thursday is the same thing as next Thursday. Not a week from next Thursday, but anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, you guys can take off. I've got everybody accounted for. Uh, be watching for the for the quizzes to pop up, and uh, I'll see you Thursday the third. Anyway, guys, have a nice one, and uh, I guess we'll we'll see you then.